signed up to trial the new technology, but not everyone is convinced. What could this power? This could power a U.S. home. Average United entire States house? home. Entire house, 24-7, 365. Something okay. that small? The way we make it is yeah. in two blocks. This is a European home. The two put together is a U.S. home. Because <laughs> we use twice as much energy? Yeah, is that what and this will power four Asian homes. So four homes in India, your Absolutely. native country. Four to six homes in our country. It sounds awfully dazzling. It is real. It works. He says he knows it works because he originally invented a similar device for NASA. He really is a rocket scientist. This invention working on Mars would have allowed the NASA administrator to pick up a phone and say, Mr. President, we know how to produce oxygen on Mars. So this was going to produce oxygen so people could actually live on Mars? Absolutely. When NASA scrapped that Mars mission, K.R. had an idea. He reversed his Mars machine. So instead of making oxygen, he pumped oxygen in. He invented a new kind of fuel cell, which is like a very skinny battery that always runs. K.R. feeds oxygen to it on one side and fuel on the other. The two combine within the cell to create a chemical reaction that produces electricity. No need for burning or combustion. No need for power lines from an outside source. Michael Canellis is the editor-in-chief of the website Green Tech Media. You're very skeptical. I can see this, obviously. I'm skeptical. I'm hopeful, but I'm skeptical because people have tried fuel cells for yeah, since the 1830s. Yeah. And they're great ideas, right? You know, just you know, producing energy at an instant. But they're not easy. They're like the divas of industrial equipment. You have to put platinum inside there. You've got to put zirconium. The little plates inside have to work not just for an hour or a day, but they have to work for 30 years, nonstop. And then the box has to be cheap to make. One thing stoking his skepticism, K.R. has been hyper-secretive. No sign on his building, a cryptic website, and no public progress reports. Given the stealthiness, we were surprised when K.R. showed us for the very first time how he makes the secret sauce of his fuel cell on the cheap. Actually, I feel like I'm on a cooking show. You're Martha Stewart. Absolutely. So <laughs> let's take that cooking analogy. Okay. Start with the flour. The flour. Okay. What is Th that? That is beach sand. It's beach sand? That ocean beaches in multiple continents has this material in abundance. He said he bakes the sand and cuts it into little squares. Okay, so this is beach sand turned magically into, that. into a ceramic. Yeah, into a ceramic. And then he coats it with green and black inks that he developed. Okay, is it a secret formula? There is a secret formula. Okay. And, and you take that mm -hmm. and you apply that, you paint that on either side of this white ceramic to get a green layer and a black layer. And that's it? That's it. That's the so secret. what I'm holding in my hand is a fuel cell. This is the fuel cell? This, this skinny, is a skinny, cell. skinny, and this the will beauty of generate this is, power. This will generate power. One disc powers one light bulb. The taller the stack of discs, the more power it generates. In between each disc, there's a metal plate. But instead of platinum, KR uses a cheap metal alloy. The stacks are the heart of the bloom box. Put 64 of them together, and you get something big enough to power, say, a Starbucks. So this is it? KR offered to give me a sneak peek inside the bloom box. Nobody has seen this before. Are you going to let me look inside? Absolutely. Okay. Why not? This is... Uh... So... Go ahead. Here we go. Okay. Oh. All those modules that we saw go into this big box. Fuel goes in, air goes in, out comes electricity. Is the bloom box intended to get rid of the grid? The bloom box is intended to replace the grid replace for the its grid. customers. It's cheaper than the grid. It's cleaner than the grid. Now, won't the utility companies see this as a threat? and try to crush Bloom. No, I think the utility companies will see this as a solution. All they need to do is buy Bloom boxes, put them in the substation or the neighborhood, and sell that electricity. And They'll operate. buy these boxes? They buy nuclear power plants. They buy gas turbines from General Electric. To make power, you still need fuel. 
Many past fuel cells failed because they needed expensive pure hydrogen. Not this box. Our system can use fossil fuels, like natural gas. Mm -hmm. Our system can use renewable fuels, like landfill gas, biogas. Solar? We can use solar. You know, it's very difficult for us to come in here and make an evaluation. How are we supposed to know whether what you're saying is true? Why didn't we talk to our first customers? These four units have been powering a Google data center for 18 months. They use natural gas, but half as much as would be required for a traditional power plant. KR told us that three weeks in at Google, suddenly one of the boxes just stopped. Your heart just drops. Did you panic? For a short while, yes. He fixed that, then there was another incident. The air filters clog up and air is not coming into the system because the highway is kicking dirt. You just flip the system around and the problem is gone. Another company that's bought and is testing the bloom box so KR can work out the kinks is eBay. Its boxes are on the lawn in the middle of its campus in San Jose. These things fuel almost 15% of the power on this campus. John Donahoe, the CEO of eBay, says its five boxes were installed nine months ago and have already saved the company more than $100,000 in electricity costs. It's been very successful thus far. They've done what they said they would do. eBay's boxes run on biogas made from landfill waste, so they're carbon neutral. Donahoe took us up to the roof to show off the company's more than 3,000 solar panels but they generate a lot less electricity than the boxes on the lawn. So this on five buildings, acres and acres and acres. Yes, the footprint for Bloom is, is much more efficient. When you average it over seven days a week, 24 hours a day, the Bloom box puts out five times as much power that we can actually use. But not everyone is convinced that even if the technology works, Bloom, that now makes one box a day, will ever be able to be as big as its backers say. Going from a few to mass manufacturing is going to be tough. And then making them so people won't run away at the price tag. You know, it needs to be cheaper than solar. It needs to be cheaper than wind. What if he can get the price way down? He claims he can. And if he, if he can, the problem is then GE and Siemens and other conglomerates probably can do the same thing. I mean, they have fuel cell patents. They have research teams that have looked at this. What do you think the chances are that in 10 plus years, you and I will each have a bloom box in our basements? 20%. Hmm. But it's going to say GE. Up next.